This video is a review of the polyatomic bonding chapter in the quantum chemistry playlist. So we start off with hybrid orbitals. We start with sp hybrid orbitals. If we have a molecule like beryllium hydride, BEH2, we know that the bond angles are 180 degrees. So what we want to have is that the s and p orbitals of beryllium add together in such a way that they make two orbitals which point out towards each of the hydrogens, which we can have some constructive overlap and get a bonding orbital in this molecule. So one way we can do that is to have an equal uh, addition of the 2s and 2pz orbital, if this internuclear axis is the z axis here. And if we add those equally, what we get are two sp orbitals, orbitals that are 1 half s and 1 half p, 50% each and thus one of them points towards this hydrogen overlapping with its 1s, one points towards this hydrogen overlapping with its 1s, and we get our desired 180 degree linear bond angle. If we want to have that for a trigonal planar molecule like BH3, uh, that's going to be 120 degree bonding angles, and we're going to need to have sp2 hybrid orbitals in order to accomplish that. So now we're in the plane here, which I've decided defined as the ZX plane. So we need to add our 2s, 2pz, and 2px orbitals such that the coefficients will make three orbitals which point towards each of the hydrogens. So if we do this in the correct ratios described in that video, we have one which points towards this 1s, one that points towards this 1s, and one that points there, as I've sort of diagrammed out here. So these sp2 orbitals are 33% s, one third, and 67% or two thirds p for these trigonal planar molecules. And finally, we have the sp3 hybrid, useful for things like methane, where you have a tetrahedral structure and 109.5 degree bond angles. You can draw methane in terms of the kind of uh, vertices of a cube and that every uh, hydrogen atom is at an opposite vertex in the cube. That'll get you the correct tetrahedral angles. And these, uh, the s and p orbitals, the pz, px, and py in this case, will add up with their coefficients with uh, all ones that are pluses and minuses in such a way such that the the orbitals on the carbon atom will all point correctly towards each of the hydrogen atoms and be an ideal angle for bonding overlap. These orbitals with sp3 hybrids being 1 quarter or 25% s in character and 3 quarters or 75% p. Things get a little more complicated when we go to molecules with lone pairs like ammonia with one lone pair and oxygen with two lone pairs. We have the bond angles for those being 107.8 and 104.5 respectively. We see the trend of the bond angles decreasing as the number of lone pairs increases, as would be pre uh, predicted by Vesper theory from GenChem. So in this case, if we actually calculate what kind of character or what kind of angles we need <clears throat> in our uh, SP coefficients here in order to get these bond angles, what you get is something for ammonia that's sp3.3, as I define in the video, and sp4.0 for water. So that's 80% p-like or 77% p-like, uh, more than the 75% of methane to get these preferred bonding angles. So the lone pairs are giving us even more p-like character as we approach angles which are getting closer and closer to 90 degrees the more lone pairs that we add in. We then move on to Walsh diagrams, which show something like the change in the energy of individual orbitals versus a particular intermolecular coordinate. In this case, I have a molecule which has two hydrogens and a central atom, and I'm plotting the orbitals, some of these orbitals, versus the change in this bond angle. So at 180 degrees, we have beryllium hydride. At 104.5 degrees, we have water. So the question is, why is water bent and beryllium hydride straight? And we can use Walsh diagrams and the orbital energies versus theta to figure out why that is in that video. <clears throat> Moving on to Huckel theory. Huckel theory is essentially a linear variational method where we make approximations for what the Hamiltonian matrix elements are. 
So this is a good approximation for how uh, planar hydrocarbons work. We start off with the simplest example of ethylene, C2H4, or ethene, and the PZ orbitals of our pi system don't overlap with any other orbitals. So what we get there is Huckel theory defines the Hamiltonian matrix elements to be alpha, a parameter, if i is equal to j, so along the diagonal, defines them to be beta if i is next to j, like elements 1, 2, and 2, 1, or 0 if they are not adjacent. So applying Huckel theory, we get energies of E equals alpha plus or minus beta for the pi system of ethylene, and beta is an empirical parameter which has been determined to be around minus 75 kilojoules per mole. Applying Huckel theory to conjugated uh, polyenes, or planar hydrocarbons, we get the case for 1,3-butadiene with four uh, pi orbitals, that the energies of the, of the pi orbitals in the system is equal to alpha plus or minus 1.12 plus or minus 0 0.50 for these energies. And we find that the energy of this pi system is less than twice the energy of the pi system of an ethylene molecule or of a of a, of a non-conjugated or of an isolated pi system. And that resonance energy comes out to be about half of beta. So in the 30s of kilojoules per mole, we get the resonance energy predicted by Huckel theory in these pi systems. And then similarly, we can apply Huckel theory to aromatic systems, circular benzene, six pi electrons. If we define the quantity X, which equals alpha minus E over beta, we get that X, the orbital energies, relative to alpha in units of beta are plus or minus one, plus or minus one, each of those being doubly degenerate, and plus or minus two. So if we do the same analysis, the energy of the occupied orbitals in benzene relative to three of them in the equivalent ethylene, we get that the energy of aromaticity is two beta. So benzene has an approximate aromatic energy lowering of 150 kilojoules per mole predicted by Huckel theory.